Hey guys, Ben here from Squatch Reloading and today I want to address a very common question that I get and a lot of questions that I see on the groups and the forums and that is I went to the range, tried out my new hand loads and they're jamming up my gun or they're not ejecting. So one of the questions I always ask is, well what is your case overall length? How did you set it? Because when you dive into the published load data most of these manuals, these are all bullet manufacturers. For example, Nosler here. This book is for their bullets. Same way with uh, uh, Sierra, it is for their bullets. Lyman, it is mainly for you know their projectiles and their cast casting uh, information. And then there's another manual out here, the Complete Reloading Guide, a reloading manual for 9mm Luger. So when you look through all the books and you're trying to find information on a bullet that you bought that's not maybe mainstream for example uh, blue bullets or acme bullets these are acmes and i'm going to show you why using this published load data can get you into some problems when loading for your case overall length so what do you do if you buy a projectile uh, from acme or blue bullets these are great projectiles. I run them a lot and they're cheaper than buying the jacket or the plate of bullets. Uh, reason being is in my house, my daughter shoots competitively, I shoot. So to burn up, you know, thousands of rounds a month, you want to try to find the best value. So you end up going to uh, bullet, bulk bullet manufacturers like Acme. But there's no load data. So you start going through 124 grain information in every load book that you have and you'll see that it varies across the board from 1.135 to 1.14 to 1.06 to 1.10 so you're kind of left in a conundrum well what do i do so a lot of new reloaders will go get a factory round and they'll measure it and they'll be like okay 1.15 or if they have a case gauge, they're going to measure this, which is 1.169, which is the max overall length for a 9mm Luger. So what they'll do is they'll set the length of their overall to 1.15 or 1.169, and then they, they find out that they have feeding issues. Now they may get lucky and have a barrel where they don't have feeding issues, but 9 times out of 10, that is a much too that is a much too long OAL for most of your higher end nine millimeter pistols or even some of your Glock pistols won't feed something that long even though they're designed to do so. So one thing that comes up is the plunk test. So what the plunk test is is basically taking a round and dropping it into your barrel and listening for the definitive plunk. Well. These two barrels are completely different. I can't tell a difference with my ears, so I'm gonna show you what I do um, when I'm setting up an overall length and how I do the plunk test so that I make sure that every bullet that I build will fit every gun that I own. All right, guys, so I'm gonna show you why setting up just any projectile to say a factory length K or cartridge or even some of the average load data that you see in the manuals. So here we have a factory case. It's 1.15. And you can see with the factory bullet, if I stick it in my barrel, I get that plunk sound that I really can't differentiate, but it is what it is. But the point is I'm trying to make is you want to make sure that it seats completely in the chamber and that it's flush and that you can actually push and spin. And I hope you guys can see that that round is actually spinning in the chamber. And then I will stick it in the other barrel and you can see it drops completely in the chamber and I'm pushing and it is spinning. So with that logic, a lot of guys will take another, as long as it's a 124 grain round nose bullet, they will seat it to what the factory bullet was set at. So here I have one of the Acme 124 grain round nose projectiles that I have seated at the same length as the factory. And I will go ahead and 
drop it in and just so you guys know there's no primer in this because it's a dummy round I made for the purpose of this instruction. So I'm going to drop it in this barrel here and I heard a plunk and I can push and spin but I know I have multiple barrels, multiple guns so I grab the barrel that's representative of the Titus chamber so I place it in and right away I noticed a slightly different sound, but quite frankly, I can't tell the difference half the time. But you can see that it's not fully set in the chamber. And if I push on it, I can't get it to spin. And the reason is, is the projectile is lodging itself in the rifling and actually when I went to pull it out, it stuck a little bit. So that projectile is lodging itself into the rifling. and that is where you're going to see a lot of issues with getting the round to fully chamber your slide locking forward um, even some of the extraction issues because what will happen is if your uh, recoil spring is strong enough or you rack it hard enough you're actually going to push the projectile back into the case to get the length that it needs to fully close and you know that can magnify a lot of other issues like overpressure things like that especially if you're one of those guys that like to to run as hot as you possibly can but that bullet was seated at the factory length so what we need to do when we're setting up our seat die is we take our tightest chamber that we own and we keep inching or you know microscopically keep applying more depth to that projectile until we get it to fully seat in the chamber this bullet is seated at 1.09 versus 1.15 so four thousandths difference in the overall length i can now fully seat that or, uh, cartridge in the chamber and spin it and it also fits my other barrels so that's how we determine what our overall length is all right guys, well I hope that answers some of your questions on the plunk test or chamber check and how to set your overall length when there's no data available or data available that doesn't match the projectile that you use. My advice for you guys just getting into reloading is stick to bullet manufacturer manuals and data. I haven't ran into too many chambering issues when using their specified charge weights, their specified overall lengths, because they've done all the testing. They've made sure that it's fit a multitude of different chamber sizes throughout the SAMI specification. But as you get deeper in the hobby, especially if you're a competitive shooter, economically, you, you will want to go to start casting your own bullets, powder coating, or buying a more uh, economical version, like these Acme 124 grains. I've shot literally thousands and thousands of these at the same length, 1.09, through my CZs, my Glocks. My daughter has an AR9. That same length has worked through every rifle, pistol that we own. If you don't have low data, there's a lot online. I would probably advise you to take everything with a grain of salt that you get on the forums and Facebook. Um, at the end of the day, those guys aren't going to be responsible for your safety. That's, that's only you. So, thanks for watching, guys. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, like, subscribe, share. Get your comments below, and I'll do my best to answer those. Or hit us up over on the Ohio Reloading Connection on Facebook. Uh, that's a setup for all of us Ohio guys, but all of you are welcome to come on over there. We take questions. We do seminars and all that good stuff. So hit us up over there as well. Thanks. God bless.